Hello again, a big welcome to all of you who are just joining the boot camp now. Uh, if you don't know, I'm Nick, and in this video, we're gonna talk about transitions. And transitions are a lot like animations, the default animations, which we've been covering in the past two videos. Now there is a fundamental difference between a regular animation and a transition. And it's that the regular animations, like we've been doing in the past couple of videos, are animating objects that are on the screen already. So if you have an object that's on the screen and you wanna change its color or you wanna change its location or size, that's just a default animation. But if you have an object that's not on the screen and you wanna animate it onto the screen or even off of the screen, then you can use a transition. Now, transitions are definitely underutilized in SwiftUI. I think it's because they're a little tricky to get them to work because you do need some conditional logic. So thankfully, we already learned conditional logic and we are now ready to actually become experts at these transitions. So as you're gonna see, we can use these transitions not only to animate like a small object or a button onto the screen, but to even create really cool custom segues to animate a whole new screen onto our view. So I'm back in our Xcode project again and like we always do, let's create a new file for the code in this video. Let's right click the navigator, new file. It's going to be a Swift UI view. And this time we're talking about transitions. So let's call it transition bootcamp. Go ahead and click create, click resume on the canvas once you're in the file and let's get coding. So let's start by adding a very simple view to our screen. We'll add a Z stack, open the brackets, and at the top of the Z stack, I'm gonna have a button. So let's, do, let's add a V stack, and let's add a button. Just, let's use the title with the string protocol approach, because I don't really care what the button looks like. Let's set the title just as button for now. Click enter on the action, and we're just gonna leave that blank for a second. And I want to push it to the top of the screen, so let's add a spacer underneath the v, underneath the button in the VStack, so it's pushed to the top. On top of this VStack, in the ZStack, let's add a rounded rectangle. Let's give it a corner radius of 30. And let's set the frame on this. Let's set the height. And I want it to be exactly half of the screen. So instead of trying to figure out what half is, calling like maybe 400 or something like that, I'm gonna call UI screen dot main dot bounds dot height. So this is the full height of the screen and I'll do times 0 0.5, which is 50% of the screen. Now I wanna align this rounded rectangle to the bottom of the screen. So our Z stack right now has center alignment. We have alignment of center. I've already done a video on Z stacks and alignments, so you should understand this. Uh, but let's change the alignment to bottom. So the rounded rectangle, because the frame is only half, is gonna align to the bottom. Whereas the V stack has this spacer, so it's actually the full size of the screen. So it's not gonna look like it changed, and that's why our button is still at the top. So a rounded rectangle is now at the bottom. I See that there's still some white space at the very bottom and that's safe area, so let's ignore that. So at the bottom of our Z stack, let's just call it .edges ignoring safe area .bottom. And before we get into transitions, let's just add an animation because we've already done that in the last couple videos. Let's add an at state var show view of type bool equals false. And when we toggle show view, let's show the rectangle. So we'll call dot opacity on this rounded rectangle. We'll do show view, question mark, 1.0, otherwise 0, 0.0. So if show view is true, we have 1.0 opacity, otherwise we have zero. And we can call dot animation, and we can put whatever animation we want in here. Let's do dot ease in out. When we click the button, we are gonna show view dot toggle. Let's click resume and check it out. So click the button and very nicely the rounded rectangle appears on the screen. And the reason why I'm starting here is because these default animations are really good when items are already on the screen. So the rounded rectangle is already in the view hierarchy here. And even when it's got opacity of zero, it's already in the hierarchy. It's not coming onto the screen. So we can change the opacity, we can change modifiers of an item that's already on the screen. 
and that's what we've been doing so far with our animations. With transitions, however, we can animate something when it's coming onto the screen, when it's being added into the view hierarchy. So what we're going to do is add a simple if statement. So we'll say if show view, open the brackets, and we'll put the rounded rectangle inside. So now this rounded rectangle is only going to get shown if show view is true. And if show view is false, this rounded rectangle is not even going to be on the screen. It's going to be removed from the view hierarchy. So we're going to use a transition instead of opacity. So we're going to call dot transition. We're going to call dot transition. And let's start with an easy one. We'll do dot slide. So now when I click this button, this rounded rectangle is actually going to be added into the view hierarchy. And because it's being added, we can, it will use a transition. So let's check it out. Click the button. And now we have this nice slide transition it's coming in from the left, moving out to the right. That's what the slide is. And again, it's using this animation that we already have, this ease in and out. Let's check out a couple other really useful transitions. My favorite one is dot move. And here we can pick what edge we want it to move from. And one thing to note is that the edge is the edge of this view. So it's the edge of this rounded rectangle. So if we click, so if we do dot bottom, it's going to appear like it's coming off the bottom of the screen. But that's because the rectangle, the bottom of our rectangle is actually at the bottom of our screen. So if we do dot top, this is actually the top right here in the center of the screen, so it's not going to look good. And I want to show you that it's the top of the rectangle, not the top of the screen. So when we pop in, it's popping in from like this center area here because this is the top of our view. So this actually doesn't look good. But if we do dot bottom, because we're along the bottom edge, it looks perfect. And this is probably a transition that you've seen a whole lot of times in apps. A lot of developers are adding this pop-up from the bottom where you might have a bunch of options or like an onboarding to sign up or maybe some info. Uh, so this is very, very, very useful. And I would say the most common uh, animation for this is actually dot spring and not dot ease in out. So we could do dot spring and this looks pretty cool. I'm going to put that back to dot ease in out. And of course, for the move, we could do dot leading or dot trailing and it will pop in and out from the left side or the right side, much like the slide. There's a couple other transitions I want to show you guys, but they're a little tricky to implement, so I want to just run you through it. So instead of dot .move, we can call dot .opacity. And I ran into this problem a whole lot of times, and it looks like it's not really working. It looks like our view is just popping onto the screen, and that's because it's not working. And Honestly, I'm not really sure why this combination doesn't really work here, but for the opacity, uh, I've learned that if we call any transition dot opacity and then add animation directly onto this opacity, so we can call it dot animation dot ease in out, and then we don't need this animation at the bottom. And I, again, I don't know why this works, but now we can see it animating on and off the screen. So that's a neat little trick to get the opacity transition to work, and it's looking pretty good. This is great if you want to draw something on and off the screen. And the same situation is if we want to do the scale. Where we can compress the scale, and now it's going to zoom in, zoom out, which is also really, really cool. The last and final thing I want to show you guys is that we can change the transition so that it is different when it's coming onto the screen versus leaving the screen. So let's put this animation back. Let's get rid of this any transition here. And we're going to call dot asymmetric. And when we call an asymmetric transition, we can actually add an insertion as well as a removal. So we're going to put these on separate lines. Press enter before insertion. Press enter before removal just to make it a little easier to read. So we can now change how we want it to come onto the screen and how we want it to leave the screen. So for the insertion, let's call dot move. Let's do leading edge. And for the removal, let's do dot move dot bottom. So now it's going to come in from the left and move out to the bottom. We can change these up. So let's do uh, dot insertion. Let's do from the bottom and removal. We can do uh, 
any transition dot opacity dot animation dot ease in out. Now we're coming up from the bottom and leaving with the opacity. All different kinds of combinations we can do to get really cool effects. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you guys what transitions were, how powerful they could be. And as a quick rule for when you're building your apps, basically if you are trying to animate something coming onto or off of the screen, use a transition and you're gonna have to add some kind of conditional logic like this to draw the actual content on and off of the screen when you wanna show it. Uh, however, if you have something that's already on the screen and you want it to like move or wiggle and it's already on the screen, then just use traditional animations. But overall transitions are super easy to add, often overlooked. So I think these will really help you out in your apps. So that's it for this video. Hope this was an easy one. Hope you guys learned something. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking. Don't forget to subscribe if you are learning something, if you're enjoying the course. And I'll see you guys in the next video.